said, Beloved ones, now we are children of Elohim, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let's go into verse 2 a little deeper. He says, look, we know that when he is revealed, in other words, when he comes in the, in the fullness of his manifestation, in all his glory as, as king of kings, we shall be like him, for we shall see him like he is. So what are we saying? First of all, John is saying, for all of you out there that are struggling to understand the nature of the Godhead, the nature of what Elohim is, he says, just let it go. He says, I lived with him and don't get it. He says, look, we struggle to understand what it means to be an incorruptible. What does it mean to be not of the flesh? What does it mean to be able to come and go like the wind? What does it mean to, to not have time or space affect you? What does that mean? Um, we can't figure that out in our, you know, our three, four dimensional flesh. Three dimensions plus time. We don't understand that. It's like I've said this all over and over again. It's like an amoeba understanding a human being. You've got a one-celled amoeba trying to understand the bazillion-celled human being with our consciousness and all the things, how we can interact with our environment. There's no way for an amoeba to understand you. There's no way for you to understand Elohim, not in its fullness. We can only understand what he reveals to us in his word in however way we're able to do that. And still we're looking through the glass dimly. But yet, so John is saying, look, don't worry about all that. All we know is that we, when he's revealed, will know what he's like because we're going to be changed. So in other words, like the amoeba becoming a human being now can understand what a human being is. When you take off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible and you are changed from what you are into what he is, well, guess what? Now all of a sudden you'll get it because you'll see him as he is because you'll be like him. By the way, there is a caveat to this. It's not mentioned exactly in that verse, but I've always had the understanding that you are not going to be like him unless you're already like him. So let's not kid ourselves and think, oh, well, this is just a process that's just going to automatically play out. No, it's only going to play out if you are becoming like him in your character, in your mind, the renewing of your mind. It says, let this mind be in you that was in Yeshua Messiah, Philippians 2.5. Let, you have to L-E-T, three-letter word, biggest problem in all of scriptures is for you to let his mind be in you. If you let that mind be in you, that mind will manifest in a character change, into fruit of actions in your works, and then you will get this change and you will get to see him as he is. But you have to first become like him as much as you can. Now you can't become like him in his physical characteristics of being incorruptible and, and, and outside of time and space, but you certainly can in his character, in his behavioral traits, and that's what we're talking about going back to the last verse of chapter 2. It says, if you know that he is righteous, that that's his character, that that's what he is, even though you don't understand his physical body, which is what's happening in chapter 3, he says, then, then you also know that everyone doing righteousness has been born of him. You're letting that mind be in you. Continuing in verse 3, he says, and everyone having this expectation, what expectation? To put on the incorruptible, to be changed physically into what he is. Everyone having this expectation in him cleanses himself as he is clean. You cleanse yourself to be as he is clean. He, Yeshua, is clean. So then we have to say, mm, what did Yeshua do that kept him clean, that made him clean? Well, he says, and we're going to read verses with this. He says, I only do what my father tells me to do. In other words, I'm completely, 100%, perfectly submissive and obedient to the commandments. To the instructions of the Father. Because even though he was the lawgiver on Sinai, he was only giving what the Father wanted him to give. He's the spokesman. He's the word for the Father. So it's still the Father's commands, even though the Father's voice was not the one speaking them. He was the word, the speaker, the spokesman for the Father. 